workbench share space with all my projects. Hmm. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Nick. I am out in my workshop uh, getting ready to build a holster. So I do this occasionally. I keep trying to lightly try to start a business doing holsters. I've been at it for about eight months. Don't have a ton of experience, but I can make one. And in the spirit of fixing your own car or doing your own whatever, you can make your own holster, save a little bit of money, try out a carry position with a different pistol and not spend $60, $70, $100 on a holster that you might only carry once and then realize you hate. So here's, here's a holster that I made for myself right at the very beginning. So this is this is my carry gun or one of them. So it's hot. So that's that's essentially what I did. But I can do better. Glock 19, easy peasy. I uh, didn't get the holes lined up on this wing, so I drilled my own. And then this is just a really cheap clip. I started out buying cheap stuff because I didn't know if I was going to like the hobby. And this basket weave um, pattern is okay, but I would rather have something solid, I think. So today, I'm going to build myself a new uh, concealed carry holster. Come along with me if you want and we'll do this together. Alright, so obviously you can use uh, your, your pistol. Like if, you, if you're if you not going to do this on a regular basis, there's no sense in buying prop guns. But I like to, well I started using my own like actual firearm, but it, it does tend to wear on the, on the finish. So these I've got, and you can't see off camera, but I've got a, a variety of prop guns. So there's a Glock 19 prop gun. Here's another one. Uh, different manufacturer, but same idea. And then these are blocked out. They call them prepped. For uh, sight channel up top and then the controls on the side. So that you don't have to uh, tape blocking on it yourself. This is kind of... And, you know, they're assuming, obviously, they're assuming that they know how you want your pistol blocked. If you were doing a bunch of them uh, differently, you could you could grind on this and do whatever you wanted. But they do save a little bit of time. And if you were doing a, a bunch of these pistols, you could do a lot more uniform product by using a prepared mold. So, so we'll start with one of these. And then, so again, you don't have to block it. Out. But... Um, the, so, I guess essentially you could just throw this in, you know, your hot kydex and, and be good to go. One thing you need to take into consideration is how you're going to attach it to your belt. So, obviously, here's there's a paddle. We're not going to do one of those because this is a very not a concealed carry holster. Here's what I did for my Glock 43, and it's got an outside. Well, I'm sorry, it's got an inside the waistband, but a non-tuckable. Um, clip and I'm actually out of these so I'm not going to use one of those that takes a different kind of block what I do have and I like to use are these these plastic clips and if you would imagine it would attach you know somewhere down here on the pistol and that would allow you to when you're you know tucking your shirt in to tuck it around the pistol and keep it a little bit concealed so I don't actually have to block anything when you're doing when you do one of these. You could. Um, they make plates that go in here and add spacing, but we're not going to mess with that. We're just going to we will um, we'll figure out where this goes after we get the pistol out of the hot kydex. Well, after the kydex cools down. So there you go. Step one would be finding out your mold. Second step. Um, so you. Obviously, you, your, your Kydex comes in sheets, a couple different sheets, and I've got other colors. Uh, they come in a million different colors. Um, get this hot, and then form it around the pistol, and then I've got uh, some, some presses. We'll show you that in a second. Um, once you've heated this up, you are kind of slightly playing a game with Beat the Clock, so uh, we'll wait a minute and do that. Presses come in different types. You can buy them, make them yourself. But I've made myself. This one I just made. I've got some hinges, some fasteners at Lowe's. This is just plywood. And then that, that's isomat. <laughs> um, 
or think like camping sleeping mat. So that's essentially what isomat is. And then this foam, I did actually buy from a holster um, gear website. So this is, I don't know what's special about it. It feels, it's not memory foam, but it kind of feels like it. And so that, that wraps around your hot kydex. So you put your kydex in there and then your pistol. And that, and then squeeze it down with a clamp. Maybe the same one that I used on that window. And that's your, that's your process. So, before you get to heating, like I said, I've got a variety of colors. They come in all kinds of different colors. So I've got, I've used this, this darker coyote for several holsters. So I think I'm gonna keep with that theme. It's not this lighter one. And just go down here to that. And it's been my experience over the time doing this that you don't need a full sheet. So well, this I guess is you can buy these in up to four foot by eight foot pieces, but you don't need that. I found that most holsters end up using about eight inches by eight inches of Kydex, and this ought to be, this ought to be twelve inches. If I put my framing square over it, that's twelve. So I'll just back this off to eight over here make sure I'm square you score it with the razor knife and you score it a couple times and you can fold it in half and break it there you go there's your 8 by 8 now so heat this, I'm gonna heat it with the, with the textured rough side up. I sometimes will, I'll bisect it here at four inches, so there's half, and then I'll draw on it, on the smooth side, which will be the inside of the holster, just the center line, so that when you're playing beat the clock, you get a place to line up that, um, that side channel. Not a necessary step, but it saves a little bit of time. When time is of the essence. Go ahead. I got the I got the oven inside heating up. I have a toaster oven, but again, this is all hobbyist style stuff. So we'll throw this in there. The um, magic number to get this up to is somewhere north of 300 and south of 350. I usually aim for 220, 230. And when it gets to that temperature, I'll pull it out. And then again, we'll, we'll be playing beat the clock again. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to keep this camera rolling, set up the way it is, and then just go ahead in there and heat it. And that'll be an off camera process. Sorry about it. I'd like to set my mold up beforehand. There we go. That way everything, everything that's time dependent is ready before I get out here. So there we go. All right. I'll put my prop gun over here. So I've got it ready to go. I'm going to side heat this up. I'll wear gloves because I don't want to burn my widow fingers. And we're good to go. We'll be back in a minute. All right, so I'm about 315, 320 on the temperature, which is good enough by me. So there we go. I like to favor the front of the pistol more than the rear because the rear is going to get trimmed anyway. Here we go. I'll put a lot of pressure down as I'm squeezing. And about this point, you can let go. More clamps I'm going to add now. I have found that it is possible to get these things too tight, but it's hard to squeeze these squeeze clamps to that point. So I'm going to stop about there. And now we play the waiting game. 
So it takes between, uh, it takes uh, at least 10 minutes to, for this to cool. I like to go another day, 15 as long as I'm not being impatient. So I'm going to set my timer and I'll start the camera back up when it's time to take the clamps off. Okay, so it's been pretty close to 15 minutes. Your, oh, look at that. So your, your Kydex is well and solidly cured. At this point, if you pull the mold apart and you realize that, that you did something wrong, there's a crease or a wrinkle in it, you don't like the way it looks, maybe you off-kiltered off your sandwich, um, you, can, you can put it back in the oven and flatten it out and try again. Now, hopefully that doesn't happen, but it, remember that is definitely a possibility. Um, but I mean to say it's definitely a possibility to fix anything you've messed up at this point. There you go, now that's what you got. So that's actually a pretty decent mold. We did a fairly good job. The uniformness is, is pretty much on point. You've got pretty nice definition of your prop gun. Now, this is a, this whatever they call this, this uh, press compression molding. The dudes that do vacuum molds are gonna get a lot more definition on their, their pistols. And there's just, that's just the only way about it. You don't, Definition does not necessarily equal quality. So the next step at this point is, is going to be we'll trace out what we want to cut off and then we'll start start cutting. All right, so when it comes to shaping the, the, the actual shape of the holster itself, there are obviously going to be some things that are subjective. How much material do you want around the magazine release? I like to leave as much as I can as long as it doesn't impede the draw stroke. So sometimes that's a del delicate balancing act, and sometimes you do okay. How much, how much, uh, how much kydex do you want above the um, your hand on the back as a sweat guard? I like to leave some. Maybe ideally you would bring the kydex all the way to the edge of the slide, but in practicality, it's not going to matter too much. Also. I, again, I, I, I tend to favor the, the um, muzzle of the pistol. I like to leave a decent bit of kydex around the front. It makes for a more comfortable ride inside your pants if you do it that way. So this is what we've got back here. Yeah, again, so maybe, maybe I've left a couple centimeters off. I'm not worried about it. What we're going to get, and this is just a colored pencil, basically. There we go. This is a white colored pencil. And I'm going to draw on this a little bit, and it will shape and probably draw again, and shape and draw. So I like to make it, I like to come down as like a hexagonal uh, shape, and then we'll kind of probably do something like this. And then we'll round these edges off a little bit. Um, as far as the trigger guard is concerned, I used to bring my, my Kyrex all the way to the edge of the trigger guard, but I have found that I actually prefer coming out here a little bit. I think it leaves a cleaner look. Now that's now that's going off at a funky angle. A straight edge, straight edge is your friend. It's not an official straight edge, but it'll work. So we'll come around hold it like this. That looks pretty good. That's parallel with a sight channel, so that's what we want. This color pencil thing, so this is all removable, washable. You can wash it off until the point, if you heat it on there, it'll actually bake into the cracks, and you can still get it off, but it's more difficult. And I'll come up here. See if we can do something about favoring that magazine release, and we may not be able to. And I'll come up. Uh, yeah. We'll see what that looks like for starters, and maybe not cut all our way out yet. You know, always, you always cut more off later, but you can't add it back. And then over here, I like to leave the sweat guard, so 
typically what I end up doing is drawing a shape that looks kind of like this, riding that. So this up here, and then I'll ride down the the uh, contour of the back of the trigger guard, something like that. And then maybe, maybe we'll do this. We'll come up here a little bit. Again, you can always take it off, but you can't put it back if you take off more than you want. Yeah, something like that. And when we cut, we'll probably favor the line. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how that gets us going. This is a pretty messy process. It's nothing toxic or caustic. It's just plastic uh, flex. But it gets in your face and your eyes. So I definitely wear eye protection. I don't worry about a, a vapor mask, although I know some people who do that. And I've got earplugs in because it's, it's somewhat loud and I'm in a confined space and I'm nearly deaf to begin with. So that's what I've got for PPE and then apron, obviously, to keep the, the, the crumbs off of me. So we'll get to cutting this. Um, one thing I did not block out for or trace out for is the hole for my... Uh, pocket or my belt clip and we'll get to that in a little bit. So here we go. I'm using a Dremel tool again I'm very much at like the beginner hobbyist level of holster making I don't have a bandsaw that would be like the ideal Tool to have but you know could probably afford one just I don't know where the heck am I gonna put it with everything else that point it's a it's a rough shape but we're actually really close to the finished look of the holster it's rough obviously we're going to clean it up on the sander and we'll get our uh, holes mocked out for our belt clip we'll do that stage next okay so mock it up for uh pocket clip not pocket clip belt clip so this is a jig. It's designed to actually go on top of the pistol before you put it in the mold, but I'll use it to mark holes. So essentially, what I'm looking at is a couple holes in parallel with the slide and the sight channel and the edge of the poster down here. And here's a clip we're using. So these holes don't actually line up with those. We get one on there. So we're going to mark one. And then we'll flip the jig around and I'll show you what I'm doing with that. But I think, you know, imagine that the top of the clip is the height that is going to sit in your pants. And I like, I know that you got to balance uh, ride height. So that's how much pistol sits inside your pants uh, to get a, a balance of, of comfort of carry and of concealability and then draw as well so the higher up it sits in your pants so the further down the clip goes the easier it is to get a hand on it to draw but then they also have a lot more printing so I like to opt for as much gun in my pants as I can and I might take a hit on draw time but that's a chance I'm willing to take so we're gonna go this first hole that's that's exactly where we want that so I'm actually using a Dremel tool with this bit in it because my drill is in a van and I'm not going to go pick it out. So here we go. Like that. So then the next hole, man, two hands. So that's where our next one's going to be, and I'm going to put this jig back on there. Alright, so I ugly that hole up a little bit, but I think it's serviceable. Probably wouldn't saw that holster, but since I'm making it for myself, it'll be alright. There we go. Alright. With the drilling done, at least for now, 
stick it on the grinder or the sander, try to get a more refined shape on it. Next step, we're going to switch back to the Dremel tool and we're going to buff out the edges with a, with a finer grit sandpaper and then do a little bit of fine tuning. And again, that'll all be done with the Dremel. Something that separates the men from the boys when it comes to holster building, or I guess what I should say is the people with attention to detail. And I've seen expensive holsters not go to this next step because I've just got a piece of thousand grit sandpaper. You could use the same thing with emery cloth, or if you had a bench grinder with a buffer wheel, that would be the tool to use. Again, as a hobbyist level, I don't have that. So, uh, thousand grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to dress up the edges. Another thing you could use, I've seen, is a uh, denim with uh, shoe polish that would be a good one too again all I've got is sandpaper so we're just gonna we're just gonna dress the edges takes a second but you know I'm not saying none of the big guys do it because I know there's a couple high quality holster makers out there but some some professional brands don't take this step Glasses are fogging up, so here we go. I focus on a somewhat dressed edge. I'm going to take this inside, wipe all the or rinse all the dust off of it. Come back out here. We've got a couple more steps. Okay, so at this point, we should have all of the grinding and uh, most of the shaping done. I've got one more thing to do. We're going to do it with a heat gun. We're going to put a little bit of a bevel on this leading edge away from your body so that as you're reholstering, you've got a little bit of a lip, a funnel to funnel the, whole, the pistol back in there. We're going to do that. Uh, first, we're going to clean up the work area, and then we'll, we'll put the thing together. And take a lot of heat. There you go. See, it's not much of a lip. But every little bit helps. Now you wouldn't want to go too much more than that, especially around the trigger guard, because now you're introducing a, a channel for dirt and debris to get in behind your trigger and cause a um, inability to pull the trigger. Now you could you could at this point redress this edge, but I think I think that would be wasted steps at this point. So we're going to attach our hardware and be done. Okay, so at this point, at this point you've got a few options. So we're going to use this clip. So that goes here. I've got some offsets. These little things that go on here. Oh, oh, there we go. That will hold the clip off of the edge of the holster a little bit. If you want more ability to tuck behind it. And we're going to try one of these maybe. What I've also got are some wings. We've got this style wing that does line up. 
if we use that, we're probably going to have to take the Dremel and pull some of this off, which is fine. They are customizable that way. Like that. And the wing, if you don't know, is designed to pull the, the, the pistol this direction further into your body. Is it necessary? Hmm, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. I've got a couple other styles of wing, too. There is... Uh, what do they call this one? Mod wing. Those are expensive. And I've got a couple cheap ones that I thought I would try. These are the like the least expensive. But, oop, but these holes don't line up, so we won't probably be using this one. Although, eh, it's close enough. Inside, and the way do you adjust your retention, I'm going to put a couple of rubber spacers inside there. There's a thick one. Probably don't need one that thick. Uh, oh, here's my thin ones. Might get away with that. We might use a thick one to see what happens. At this point, this is kind of about feel. And because we're using... We're using spacers and possibly a wing and that clip. We're going to opt for some longer hardware. There we go. So the back of the holster, we're going to put these. But we're going to stick the rubber spacers in there first. Try to do them two at a time if we can. Just hold them in there with our fingers. And then these posts will go in there and hold the spacer. In place. Boom, there we go. All right, now the front. Uh, there's our clip. We're going to try this little thing, this doodad. See if we like it, and if we do, cool. If we don't, we'll pull it back apart and try that mod wing or some other wing. Okay, all right, so that's what you've got with just the spacer no mod wing, no bat wing, and we've got our rubber spacers inside. Now you can check fitment with your mold gun. It's okay. Or you can check fitment with your real pistol if you've got one. Because they do tend to fit just a little bit different. And that, that's a snug fit. Do we like it? I'm going to try it out and see if we do like it. Okay, forgive the abdomen shot. Here we go. Do we need the wing? It would definitely assist. So we'll try the wing and see if we like the wing better than no wing. I'll tell you right now, this is a very comfortable holster. I don't hardly feel it at all, but there's a bit, a bit of printing. So let's put the wing on and see if we like that better. Okay, here we go. Off camera, add the wing. That pushes this clip quite a bit more out, which is not necessarily a bad thing. And there we go. So back up. Definitely more concealed. So there we go, we're gonna keep the wing on. One thing aesthetically that I dislike about this wing, here we go. The wing is now pinching the holster together over here, which is serviceable if we just pull some of the plastic off the top. So we're gonna do that. I'm not gonna bring you along for that, it'll be off camera, and we'll put it back together. All right guys, so here's the finished product. I'll bring you back down here in a minute. Obviously, you can do this yourself. It doesn't take any skill. It definitely takes a little bit of a learning curve. A good one, a good looking one, like this, and I can do better, obviously. Uh, it took me eight months to get to this skill level, but you can put one together that's completely serviceable in you know, a weekend of screwing around in your garage. Here you go. 
You're not spending $85, $100 on a holster that you may hate. There you go. All right, once again, can you do this yourself? Absolutely. You gotta give it a try. I think anybody can do anything they put their mind to within reason. You obviously can't fly. If you like mine and you'd rather me do it, I, I do, I am a hobbyist, but I also have been making these for people. So hit me up. Um, I'll, leave, I'll leave links down here somewhere if you want me to build you one yourself. Otherwise, buy the material and try it yourself. I, obviously, the more you do it, the more experience you'll get, but you can put together a decent holster in a weekend for under 20 bucks. Keep doing cool stuff. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.